Welcome to my first boat. After over seven months of restoration on land, our boat was finally put into the water, where the adventure continues as it is being refit into a full-time liveaboard. This week I traveled to a remote location to take care of some works that required me to run the generator for extended periods of time. But before we get to that, let's dock our ship on this wall. I already turned her around so that we can dock against the current of this little canal here. And please keep in mind that this is my very first time docking this ship in this way all by myself. The speed and direction seem fine. Maybe a little bit too close, so let's push her away a little. Now she's moving away too far from the wall again, so I'm gonna have to put her in reverse and give it a little push with the bow thruster. Alright, now we are back on track, so all I have to do is catch that pole with my rope. And that is easier said than done. Alright, one last try. Nope. Maybe let's try to get it like this. Ah, almost. No. So let's back her up properly and try to catch that rope. There you go. Now we can pull her close and tie her up. And there you have it. Now that she's nice and secure, we can shut off the engine. First we'll have to build a little roof over the aft deck, so that we can access and run the generator easily. Like so often, the weather conditions are just perfect. At some point, an IKEA bookshelf passed by. Now then, let's start the generator and let's get started. The goal is to build a platform down here in the starboard side of the engine room. 
This is the plan we did several weeks ago. And here's the steel we got to build it. Some angle profiles and some flat profiles. All 4mm thick. First, let's prepare the areas in the engine room where we are going to weld in some new pieces. One particular challenge with this job is how to get everything properly aligned, since there are hardly any straight lines to refer to, and the space is so narrow, we'll have to come up with some creative ways in order to get this more or less straight. For this first piece I was lucky to be able to use the force of gravity to help me hold this in place for welding. Now that that's done, I have to cut it off at the right height. And as I had the first piece in, I was just starting to think that this is easier than I expected. So cheerfully I went on to cut more pieces, until suddenly I got some visitors. It turns out the remote location I carefully chose had quite a substantial residential area right on the opposite shore, which is fine on any normal day, but this day was a national holiday during which it is forbidden to perform such noisy works, a fact that the water police was very kind to inform me about while handing out a fine to me for an administrative offense. Great. Just perfect. But I had enough other things to do that didn't require a noisy generator, so it wasn't really a problem. The next day, however, there was no more holiday, so at 6 a.m. sharp... Take that, neighbors. No, I'm just kidding. In fact, the batteries were charged so full that I was able to finish the job on a single charge of the batteries including all the welding that had to be done. When set to about 110 amps, the welder is actually pulling about 200 amps during the welding. But that's easily within the capacity of our inverter charger and our generator. So let's get on with the build. Here I'm welding in the second and third pillars of the platform And it's nothing short of a miracle that I managed to get these in so straight. Next we're gonna cut the angle profiles and weld those in place. Here's the first one. This is the second one. And here the third angle profile to be welded in. Let's add some welds in areas we missed out before. Right, now the main structure is in place. Now we can connect those pillars with the flat profiles. And after cleaning and adding some zinc aluminum spray, the steel structure for the platform was finished. Let's fill up some diesel for the main engine. And then we can untie the boat and be on our way. But before that, let's learn a valuable lesson. Never simply untie the boat. And that's where we hit some metal structure here in the back. You can see that big piece of steel here hanging at 5 o'clock. Luckily the damage is only cosmetic. Only some paint and filler has chipped off. But the steel underneath didn't even get a dent. The second thing I learned here is that you should always check 
the position of your rudder before you untie the boat. In this case here, the rudder was pointing all the way port side, so trying to accelerate forward, the boat was only being pushed further into the wall. And it took me a while to figure out why we weren't moving forward. But eventually I did figure it out and then I was on my way back home. And with that my first little solo adventure was coming to an end and aside from a couple little hiccups it all went very smoothly. I like our little dinghy, not just because of its color, but because it can be easily handled by a single person. Making it perfect to take on such solo trips in case it's the only way to get ashore. Since I'm also using it to run my daily chores, I got this tiny little electric motor. It's barely strong enough to move a single person, but it still works. So for now, that's my land going solution. It's powered by another one of my Firefly batteries, which I'm charging while running the generator with a 30 amp charger. Alright, now here's what I did after the water police shut down my generator, making a new attachment for the hatch here covering the doorway down to the forward cabin. Currently, this is only held in place by a few nails sticking out, so I'm sure we can find a better solution for this. I've got some nice little 2x4s in spruce wood, which is not ideal for using on a boat, but it's the only thing I have, so let's just take it. Here I'm making the marks to cut the first piece. So the plan is to make a simple frame on the three sides of the hatch to secure it in place. Now I'm cutting the second and third piece of the frame, Now I'm removing remaining bits of old wood and nails that are sticking out. And then it's time to put in place the first piece of the new frame. Next we can put in place the two side pieces. Here we're gonna have to drill some holes and add new screws. And for this I'm gonna reuse some old screws here from the boat and after sanding and polishing them a little they get a really nice shine. So let's drill some holes and then countersink for the heads and then put in the freshly polished screws. Here on the other side we have a little crack the crack will be glued and then we can also drill some holes and put in the screws on this side. Now we can screw together the angles here of the frame and this is most likely just gonna be a temporary connection. Anyway, for now this is done and it can wait for us to be ready to move on to the next steps. We finally got around to add the filler strips to our window seals. It was a really warm day, so the conditions were perfect to do this kind of job. And we do know that these seals have been put in the wrong way. Those filler strips should be put in from the outside, but that's the way they are now and that's the way it's gonna be. Here's the port side in the aft cabin. And my friend even managed to do the last window all by himself.
Now let's do the windows of the forward cabin. These were put in the right way. And there you have it. Now this topic of window seals is finally over. Now for the last job of today's video, we're gonna remove the tarpaulin and free some space here on the aft deck. Because the plan is to erect this bracket, which came with the boat and so the holes are already drilled into the roof. So let's clean this up a little and then we can see how we can attach this. The base of the bracket is not straight, so it doesn't sit flush on the roof. That's why we're going to use some rubber pieces, together with copious amounts of sealant, in the hopes to get this watertight. Same here on the other side. Of course, once the sealant has dried, we'll cut away the excess rubber and make it look a bit nicer. So there you have it. And here's what the screws look like from the inside. And with this very shaky sunset, I'm signing off. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video. Thank you.